This is a slide presentation of Early Avalon, compiled and narrated by Bonnie Bender in December of 1992. This is not a history of Avalon as such, but comments on a grouping of slides made from old pictures for the Avalon, New Jersey Centennial in 1992. I have researched these slides with several longtime residents of Avalon, and they are accurate to the best of our memories. My thanks go to Suzanne Daggett Senhan for producing the slides, Francis Phillips for furnishing many of the pictures which have been reproduced, Dee and George Phillips, Dr. John Barron and Mitty Barron Quay, Dick and Jane Forrest, Wendell Barron and Debbie Barron, Don Bender and all others who gave me information. Other sources were a brief history of Avalon by Dr. Agnew R. Ewing and the history of Avalon by Bob Matt. In the early days, the island was used as a cattle range by three families on the island. Much of the island was covered by woodlands from 25th Street to 37th Street. The woods grew right up to the sand dunes, which were some of the largest on the Jersey Shore. This is a very old slide of a horse and wagon on the beach. They hauled sand from the dunes for fill for lots in a horse-drawn wagon. There was a great profusion of wildflowers. This is a field of wild hibiscus. This is the first house on Seven Mile Beach. It was between 30th and 31st Streets, called Old Limerick. It was torn down in 1907. An old sawmill. Many of the original houses were built from trees grown here. Many may remember a later lumber yard owned by Mr. Clouding at the corner of 28th Street and 2nd Avenue. When they leveled the dunes, this remains of an old tree was found at the corner of 9th Street and 1st Avenue, looking to the beach. This is the same tree looking toward the inlet. Betty Statner's house is behind. United States Life Saving Service. Left to right, we have Dick Cross, second is unknown, Captain Swain, Howard High, Corey Nickerson, Al Taylor, and Sam Morton. Excursion train. This picture was dated June 4th, 1890. The story has it that they brought prospective buyers down and sold them lots at low tide. Avalon Beach Development Company in the 1890s. They look like fast operators, don't they? Now these are the town fathers, Avalon Beach Company stockholders. Dedication of the causeway and boardwalk. U.S. Life Saving Service from 1895 to 1913, then later became the U.S. Coast Guard. The name of the boat is Relief. Walter Smith is the first one on the left. He was George Phillips' grandfather. Another picture pushing a huge old surf boat over the beach to the surf. These boats were used to rescue survivors from shipwrecks. The captain wore dark clothes and the savers wore white. The inset at the top was the schoolhouse and Burrow Hall. Dr. John Barron tells us that he went to school on the first floor and the borough meetings were held on the second floor. The bottom photo is a glimpse of farmland at Avalon, New Jersey. An aerial view of Avalon in the early 30s. See how it juts out in the ocean and how little of it was developed. The end of the boardwalk was at 32nd Street. You can see the bend in the boardwalk at 25th Street and the old casino at 29th Street. Avalon Avenue came as far as 29th Street, 1st Avenue to 37th Street, and 2nd Avenue, or Dune Drive, was the railroad, which went through the woods to Stone Harbor. That section was called Holiday Beach. If you follow the railroad to the north, you can see the horseshoe curve, see the black line, as it goes across Townsend's Inlet. 
early houses. This was called shantytown. These small houses were grouped around by the life-saving station. They were lived in by the families of the lifesavers. This shot was across the 21st Street Bridge. This island was called Seagate. 25th Street over the bridge was called Sewickley Island. This cottage was built in 1909, first owned by Alice Kilpatrick and Florence Marshall, then by Savins, O'Keefe's, and now Joy O'Keefe Filbert. This is the Corson Quay Cottage, which was right next door to O'Keefe's, was built soon after and was purchased in 1911 by Sue Corson, then owned by Ruth Corson Quay, then Bob and Mitty Baron Quay. Dock and visitors to the Corson Cottage. A scene at the inlet. These houses are no longer there. Early houses on 21st Street, reported to be Avalon Development Company homes. The inset reads, artists find many opportunities for sketching at Avalon. The sand dunes, woodland, and ocean afford a combination rarely found anywhere in the USA. Larger home at 1st Avenue and 8th Street. This was Captain Swain's house. Later it belonged to George Gilbert. See the 17th Street Casino in the background? This picture was taken from the Avalon Hotel. This is 6th Street and Dune Drive. The home was owned by Reinhardt. 21st Street taken from the boardwalk. The large house in the foreground is gone, but the house on the next corner is still there. Betty Statner's house at 8th Street and 1st Avenue, taken from the Hotel Avalon. Little's house is the one in the rear with a pointed tower. The Sherwood, original home of the Spielbergers, grandmother of Jenna Jo Dakes Daroff, now the Diller home for the blind. The old water tower at 13th Street and 2nd Avenue. Early pictures of the water pump house by the tracks at 13th Street. Second water tower with the water pump house. Interior of pump house showing the gasoline powered engine which had to be hand started. This was done by the same gentleman who lighted the gas lights at night. His name was Thomas Needham and he was Dr. John Barron's grandfather. Camp Seacrest in Avalon. It is believed that this was the Walsh home situated at 13th Street and Avalon Avenue, which now has been beautifully restored. Michelle's Children's Playground at 21st Street. A typical beach scene. Note the car on the beach. Lifeboats had become somewhat smaller, but clothing had become somewhat more bulky. Scene on the 23rd Street Wharf showing the 25th Street Bridge. Note the bathing suits. This was a tryout for the lifeguards and it was a big event. Bill Eaton, captain of the guards, is in the white bathing suit and is talking to Bus Poole, one of the other guards. Hun Cole's airplane in the late 20s. A ride in the plane at that time cost $2. Bathing beauties posing with the airplane. The tennis group. Tennis was a big thing. There were lots of tournaments. Left to right, the first person is unknown, then Paula Bodine Carr, Red Herbst, Mayor Bergner, another unknown, possibly Marjorie Little, then Jack Scattergood, Anna Margaret Calhoun, and Harry McKinney. Another view of the playground. Look at the dunes between the boardwalk and the ocean. 
Aerobics, 1930 style, at the 33rd Street Beach. Called calisthenics, then. Note the dress, especially the leader. Running into the ocean, look at those bathing shoes. A beach party. Strollers. The couple in the foreground are the parents of Doris Hanna of Avalon. This is a postcard scene. Note the hand-painted sky. This is what they called a colored postcard. An old interest note. The interest works out to be about 5%. This is interesting because of the names of two of the town fathers, Gilbert Smith and Lewis Canfield. This is the old railroad bridge. It was very narrow. You could look right down into the water on each side, especially scary on the inside of the curve. The train traveled at a very slow speed, maybe five miles per hour. Dr. Barron said they used to walk this bridge, and when a train came, they got out on one of the beams. The railroad was very important to Avalon. There were no roads to the island until after the turn of the century. Mr. Ludlam's grandfather, the huckster, brought his vegetables to Avalon by boat and wheeled them around town in a wheelbarrow. This end of the bridge construction does not look very secure, and I understand that it was washed out several times. The Avalon Railroad Station at 8th Street and 3rd Avenue. Waiting for the train to go home. This is the Piermont Station, which was between 32nd and 33rd Streets, in the middle of Dune Drive. It is now at 151 33rd Street. It was purchased and moved there when the train service was discontinued. Huey H. Holmes owned the house in the back. Wendell Barron's room was on the third floor. That's the window in the point. Catching the train at 21st Street, actually between 19th and 20th Streets. One of those old cars could have belonged to Jitney Alice, who met all the trains. This is an old house on the waterway. Boat houses, Cornell Harbor and 7th Street. Fishing nets at 33rd Street. Boat and nets belong to high bats. This is the entrance to an old boat, which was used as a house. It was located at 11th Street Marina. In the early years, it was called the Coast Guard Cove because the Coast Guard boat was moored there. Then it became Harvey's Harbor and now the Commodore Bay Club. Lifeguards in 1938. Top row, Bill Eaton, Artie Gager, G. Murray Wolf III, Bus Poole, Howard Smith. Bottom row, Don Bender, Russ Conrad, Howard Bacon, Carl Tress. They worked 58 hours a week and received $60 a month as a first year guard and $90 a month as a regular guard. This is the bathing beach. North end of the island at 6th Street. North end of the island, 6th Street looking east. The post office is on the left. Typical seashore cottage in Seagate. Borough building and second school. The first school was held in the home of Minnie Tucker at 7th Street and 2nd Avenue. The third school in Avalon in 1912 still stands and is now the town library. Memorial Day Parade at 21st Street. This was in the early 30s. As for the businesses in town, this is Barron's early delivery truck. Grocery delivery was the common thing.
Barron's new delivery truck. Store personnel came around and took the orders and then delivered them. Very few families had cars or telephones. Spurl's delivery truck for the fish market. This was in 1928 or 29. Spurl's market at 33rd Street and 3rd Avenue. This was 1930. The old ice truck, which kept us cooler by a mile. Dorothy Barron, taken on 25th Street, showing James Hardware in the background, which faced on 2nd Avenue. The building is now part of Mirabella's. Sportsman's Tavern in the late 40s, often referred to as Sporty George's Tavern, named for George Salveson. In the early 1900s, it was Hiller's Bakery, later known as the Rocking Chair, and now Mirabella's. King's Pharmacy on 21st Street, showing the front addition. Civil defense personnel during the war years. The shortest lady is Mrs. Highfield, and the lady in the striped coat is her daughter. The old post office, originally on 6th Street, now 1019 1st Avenue, facing west. Walter Smith, Francis Phillips' father, was the postmaster. The old Causeway Bridge at 21st Street opened for water traffic. The bridge keeper opened and closed the bridge by walking a bar around, which literally wound the bridge around. This operated until 1968, when the new bridge at 30th Street Causeway opened. This is a grand old house at 33rd Street and 1st Avenue. It is still there, it's painted blue. First Avenue from 9th Street looking north. The Avalon Hotel is at the far right. 22nd Street and First Avenue was the Wolf Home. Later, Jim Hunter lived there. The Michelle House is on the right. Joe Muldoon lived there later. This house is at 11th Street and First Avenue. Originally was on 5th Street and 2nd Avenue, owned by Renshaw. Note the gas lights. Ground free, house at actual cost to bond purchasers. Right today. This was the real estate ad. Located at 10th Street and Avalon Avenue. You can see Wells Church behind. This house is still there. First Avenue and 32nd Street, Piermont. Built by Bill Whitmire. Earlier years, it was a summer home for the mentally retarded, run by Miss Rachel Brewster. Roberta Brewster, her sister, was Don Bender's kindergarten teacher in Lansdowne. House on the right belonged to Wilkinson's, and the next on was Clark's, better known as the Sea Lark. Residence of P.O. Falwell and Charles B. White on 21st Street. This house was believed to be Ann Cannon Reynolds' home of Cannon Mills and Reynolds Tobacco. It is now painted light green, located at 22 East 22nd Street. The Avalon Casino on 17th Street, built in 1913, called the New Casino, built by the Avalon Development Company by a man named Charles Hall. It was a magnificent building, became the center of all social activities. Old timers tell of psychedelic lighting and bands. This is looking north up the boardwalk. The boardwalk was built in 1910, all the way from 8th Street to 32nd Street. The front entrance of the new casino, looking south. The 21st Street Pavilion can be seen in the distance. Seen from the beach. This building was condemned and torn down in 1928, so its lifespan was really only about 15 years. The old casino at 29th Street, built in the early 1900s and still in existence, served as a community hall for movies, dances, and other affairs, including basketball. 
Everyone sat in wooden chairs that were put up for the occasion. Note how the ocean is behind the boardwalk. The lifeguard stands were behind the boardwalk then also. Riding the waves at high tide was very tricky. The Avalon Pier at 29th Street, built in 1927 or 28. Note the old casino across the boardwalk and also the beach chairs on what is now the parking lot. This housed Pop Garinger's ice cream parlor, movie theater, candy shop, and gift store. Upstairs was the marine room where they had dancing six nights a week and community singing on Sunday afternoons led by Ruth Quay. Note the clothing. Full length view of the pier. In the back was the fishing pier which was destroyed by a barge in a storm in later years. This is where young couples used to go to watch, quote, submarine races after the movies. Showing the old casino. The ice cream store on the boardwalk was called Pete's Place, looking from 21st Street Pavilion. Larger shot showing an ad for Swan Beverages on the building. This building burned along with its owner. Lifeguard station at 21st Street. Peace's house at the inlet with the tennis court. You may remember it with a figurehead on the north side. It was insured by Lloyds of London. Leeming house at the northernmost end of the island. Hotel Piermont. This was around 29th Street and the beach. Built in 1888 and 1889, along with the Hotel Avalon, to encourage visitors by the railroad. In 1890, room and board at the Piermont was $2.50 a day. This hotel was destroyed by fire a few years later. Guests at the Piermont. Note the heavy clothing. It must have been during the cold weather. This was a year-round hotel. The original Princeton Hotel, which was also destroyed by fire. Here's the Princeton Hotel rebuilt in the middle of the 20s. Full view of the new Princeton. And after being remodeled in the 1950s. Hotel Avalon built in 1887 to 1888 at 5th Street and Avalon Avenue, shown on original location with a tower on the top. This hotel was moved in 1893 on rollers, reportedly by one horse, to the present site because of the infringement of Townsend's Inlet. Here's a postcard view of Hotel Avalon. See how the sky was painted on and even painted some of the color down on the roof. Hotel Avalon the day before its demolition in 1988. The old Puritan Hotel, later rebuilt and named the Whitebriar. The original was the orange section. Remodeled and all painted the same color. An aerial view of the Puritan. This is a good picture. You can see the big house on 21st Street that we previously saw, and the lifeguard station and pavilion at 21st Street. The hotel and house have been replaced by the White Briar condominiums. This is a fishing skiff at 19th Street looking north. Across the 21st Street bridge, taken from the 23rd Street wharf, Princeton Harbor, north side from left to right. The owners were Clevengers, Durbins, Whitakers, Browns, Hinterleiters, Erskins, and Sargents. Princeton Harbor from the 21st Street Bridge, going from right to left, Savins, O'Keefe's, 
quays, Avalon development houses, which are across the street from the water, and then back on the harbor, the Blakes and Johnsons. Third Avenue Canal looking north, Princeton Harbor goes off to the left. Princeton Harbor, north side. From the 21st Street Bridge, looking north, Pennsylvania Harbor goes off to the left. A view of Pennsylvania Harbor. Third Avenue Canal, looking at the 21st Street Bridge, Johnson's and Valentine's houses. Cornell Harbor, looking east. The beginnings of Harvey's Harbor. An aerial view of Harvey's Harbor. The Union Church, the first church built in Avalon in 1892 at 32nd Street and 1st Avenue. In 1893, it became the Piermont M.E. Church at Avalon, now remodeled into a private home. Colored view of the Methodist Church showing Highfield's store, Dr. Weintraub, women doctors, and the pavilion on the approach to the boardwalk, where Sunday school was often held. An early view of the Wells Presbyterian Church taken from the Hotel Avalon, the second church built in Avalon, also celebrating its centennial. Another scene of Wells Memorial Presbyterian Church in the mid-30s. Sacred Heart Roman Catholic Church, now Maristella, built in the late 20s. A postcard view of Maristella. St. John's Episcopal Church. The Old Baptist Church still survives as a private home at 17th Street and 2nd Avenue. U.S. Life Saving Service Station built in 1894. The service later had its name changed to U.S. Coast Guard. This is the view from the back. The high tide mark was 100 to 150 yards from the station. Still no streets and few other dwellings. Tennis courts at the Hotel Avalon and the Avalon Yacht and Motor Club. Not to be confused with the Avalon Yacht Club. Social outings at the Yacht and Motor Club and a fancy dress ball at the 17th Street Casino. Yachtsman. This picture was dated November 24, 1889. Outing with the children at the Yacht and Motor Club. Home of the Avalon Yacht and Motor Club. Avalon Yacht Club. Original members met at the 17th Street Casino. It was a social club and they formed the Avalon Yacht Club. They celebrated their 50th anniversary last year at the present location. Aerial view of the 62 storm. Note the Hotel Avalon. And the Runk House, which is just about to be washed away. Other houses are tipped and ready to go. Postcard views of Avalon. 10th Street and Avalon Avenue, looking at the inlet. The concrete block house was the Hoopers. The house is still there. This is another view of the same location. The swings at the playground. The sliding boards. A crowded beach. Avalon's dunes. The big bridge to Townsend's, built in 1938 and 39. 
waves washing the shore. Stone Harbor Yacht Club. This is an artist's conception. Note the sails are bigger than the building, and the perspective is also out. Send a card and check your feelings. My dear better half, I landed weary and tired. Had a bad night. This resort is too terrible. Lots of millionaires. But I'm too tired. Please send me my fare. We'll see you next week. Yours, maybe. Bonnie Bender.